what kind of impact from a budget standpoint that you know that it's going to have. Because we do know that uh, that it will have an impact. However, I feel like that what looking at that investment and then of course looking at it seriously, um, you have to look at what the payback is going to be. If we can spend some money and make our community a more attractive community um, and be able at the same time to clean up this community, making it more attractive, I do believe and also will it there'll be a benefit from economic development from that standpoint. Um, I'm not sure if anybody might have caught the article. I believe it was in last Sunday's paper under the business section where it was the Bushing and the company that's out in, uh, off of well drilling. Well drilling, that's what they used to do, but now they do put the turnbuckles. Oh. Yeah. Uh, that oh, gentleman so. made a comment <clears throat> that uh, he was traveling and came through Valdosta and stopped in Valdosta and and just thought about from that just from that short visit um, that this could be a place that he might be more located business and he did that in the answer. So he brought the industry here just simply on that stop and that first impression. Um, and uh, I feel like that is extremely important. I mean that's not always the case, but it is extremely important. We are for several reasons. We don't want to be a community that folks that are again traveling up and down I 75 makes a decision well, let's don't stop in Lyons County, let's stop in, I'm not picking on anybody, but let's just say, let's, let's stop rather in Cook County or let's stop in Hamilton County or Madison County. You know? So we don't, we don't want to become that. So we, I think we need to go, or I believe we need to go ahead and work on some of those. And so what yeah. it's worth, uh, Precision Industries made the same decision. Larry Smith. Uh huh. And that business on St. Augustine Road across from SAP. Correct. Right. That's, that's yeah. why they're here. Yeah. And I can't say enough about the community partner that the Smiths are. They have their hand in the checkbooks out to support a ton of community efforts right. where there's a training. They do a lot. Mr. Weisbanger has participated in this outreach programs that they're involved in. So that was a, a great business asset as mm -hmm. well as a great community. Well, again, I think if you, I think if you, uh, and of course, another bullet point there is, is encouraging citizens to take pride in the community. I, I believe that once through that education process and you start this, I believe that the citizens themselves will have a lot more pride in the community. And when you do have companies such as this that may come through, you'll find that because of the pride that's just in that community, that it'll make them much better community partners than what they might have been if they're just operating a business in the community and they're just trying to go about their day-to-day -day business. They feel the pride as much as the citizens feel the pride and they'll be a good community partner and they'll be able to help us uh, at local agencies with a lot of the needs that we may have inside the community. So, there's a lot of discussion about how we're going to get here. Um, uh, you know, there's the create incentives for the citizens, um, those sort of things. We want to review and share all local liver ordinances. Again, it's extremely important that this is a coordinated effort from one end of the county to the other end of the county. It's not going to do us a whole lot of good <clears throat> because, as you know, Hanger City limits extends out to I 75 now. Uh, City of Alabama extends out to I-75 in 16 and 18. It's not going to do us much good to have separate litter ordinances uh, when you've got different governmental agencies uh, that are involved in one effort. So you may have to look at coordinating those ordinances together to make them standard and complete throughout the community. Uh, and I do believe we, we can get there. It's going to take a lot of work, but I do believe we need to
us moving forward and doing what we have to do to lead by example. Yeah. Do you agree? Yeah, and I think, you know, out of all of this, there's going to be some things that we may have to look at from um, other agreements we have. Even, you know, it came up in the meeting about uh, uh, local uh, garbage hauls yeah. and a lot of debris that's coming out of, out of there. You know, we may have to put requirements uh, in the franchise agreements that's going to give some control or either put that, you know, some sort of some sort of way that if we can't get them to buy into it, uh, then you may have to require certain types of uh, uh, whatever it might be to be able to secure the load. Uh, you know, when, when as far as talking about individuals who pick up trucks and require them to net, that's, you know, that's a little far reach and overreach in my opinion at that point. Certainly the issue comes down the road that if, uh, if you're driving down the road and trash is flying out, I think there's a better way to do that than to require everybody that's got a load to Put them in. I think the issue is you just wouldn't sell phone anymore, you make a call. It's hard to find that stuff going out. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, what I see during, and pick up a lot of other during hunting season is feedbacks. Mm -hmm. I thought about talking to the folks in Burnett, south of town, about maybe a sign up, please, security, feedbacks, corn bags, whatever. Would signage. Well, again, that will play a role in, in how you go about educating the citizens and, and getting them to understand that. I really do believe that most people will buy into that concept and they'll get that community pride. Uh, I, I think it's there. It's like a lot of things. I just think that a lot of folks have just gotten really lax on it. I think it's just as easy as you're talking about, for example, the hunter pulling out of the gate and just throwing all his feed bags, bags in the back of the truck and not really paying attention to whether those feeds actually secure them all. Uh, I think if he takes a little bit more conscientious effort, they'll begin to do that. Uh, and signers such as those type places will help. Water, also, a lot, a lot of what I pick up is uh, Chick-fil-A, Burger King, McDonald's, bag, wrapping. I hate to say this, really fortunately it wasn't in Lance County and I would have said something different. But I witnessed a lady pull through the drive through of a McDonald's, pull to the edge of the road, undo all the package, wad all the package up and drop it out the window. You know, that's the sort of thing that has to be stopped. Uh, and that's the sort of thing that we're going to have to work on to get corrected. Because that's just the mentality. Again, I don't, you know, just go down the window. And we've we got... We've got, to, we've got to try to see if we can change that, and it probably starts uh, to some degree with some consistent enforcement, which mm -hmm. could be the case. But also, I think with, with a lot of other things, I think uh, the education portion of it and educating the, the, you know, the small children in the schools. Uh, I have also, uh, through other communities and, and, and other situations to where children has actually chastised a parent because that parent was literate. Mm -hmm. And the child was learning something in school and learning something about their environment. And they say, Mom, Dad, you really shouldn't do that. You know. So uh, kids have a huge impact on how we adult. I tested my grandson on that one day, coming back from the deer camp. I had some crash there in the bag. And we were on Howell Road. And I handed it to him. I said, hey, throw this out. He said, no. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Are we going to get something in school? That's the same, oh, same impression when you have property that you need your children have so much. Somebody has kids going on and they go to that back home and the same thing that happens with you. I think yeah. that's more about education and, and promoting a sense of care for your community than the whole. I mean, just to be brutally honest, I'm opposed to the whole important thing. I'm not in favor of hiring, and, and I mean, we already have tax resources when it comes to law enforcement and that sort of thing. I'm certainly not in favor of, of paying people to not throw the trash out know, and incentivizing, you know, hey, well, we'll give you a dollar for a sticker. Yeah, we'll give you a smiley face <laughs> for not throwing trash out. I agree. But, but I would say that the, on the enforcement side, if, 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 if the penalty was uh, not paying. Maybe if the penalty was having to go out there and pick up trash for a day <laughs> for that individual. That that'll change the mentality as well as curb 
Yeah, it, 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 it would change the mentality of it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. anybody can pay that, that fine, possibly, but then that's even if they get caught. Well, I don't think you can make that one happen. <laughs> Community <laughs> service? Yeah, some, yeah. Sort of, some sort of, you know, we have to before they come out bad. But along with along with litter control, um, and again, take, taking it a step further um, is the gateway improvements. Um, I look at the gateway improvements really, uh, we're looking at all the exits inside of Lambs County. Some of those exits lead into our cities, uh, and of course some of them will lead into our counties, uh, and will lead into the unincorporated areas. Uh, but certainly, uh, if you took exit two and exit 29, those those two highlight our community, Lowndes County. If you're coming in from the north, it's exit 29. If you're coming in of course, from the south, it's exit 22. So I think that uh, improving the exits and and improving means just doing a better job of the maintenance around those exits. Um, I've had discussions with. Uh, issues of mowing, you know, I do believe that in conjunction and working with GDOT, we have possibly some opportunities that may come up. Um, and again, as a benefit of House Bill 170 and then having some additional funding for maintenance, I think that we may be able to partner with them to be able to improve some of these, especially exit two, Feel real confident about that, but I think that they will look at it from the standpoint of all the exits. Um, is the exit two on the board to be replaced? Exit two, well right now, right now, there. If I've got this right, Mr. Pritchard, correct me if I'm wrong, but supposedly in March they are supposed to let the contracts for 22 and 29. Uh, that's North Valdosta and Hay High, and then 26. 17 would be exit 2. How about 31? Highway 31. That would be exit uh, 5. Exactly. No, I'm sorry, that's exit 11. Yeah, that's on the schedule too. Wait a minute, when you say let, sorry, you let, let the contracts for 22 and 29, what, what does that mean? Rebuilding those those exchanges. On the that's like for a major start. Four lane. I guess that would be the bid time. I guess if they let the contracts, they're letting the contracts mean they're putting it under contract or putting it out to bid. Putting it out to bid and get the process, make the selection. So they've done, they completed the roundabout study that we voted on? Or I do not know the answer to that. So I don't know. So but right now it would be a, a maintenance effort just to keep everything clean, mowed, picked up. That's right. And, and you certainly would see, you would see the major effort around the exits from the standpoint of, of the maintenance would have to really take on a serious note after the exchanges have been completed. Those, but while they're under construction, it's going to be pretty much a, 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 a no no deal, you know, you just want to be able to get it done and not really trying to work around through all that. But that still doesn't say, doesn't say that you can't focus on the other exits as well. Right. But the maintenance issues are things like um, shorter cuttings um, and, and shorter cutting intervals, shortening those up, trimming, cleaning. Uh, you know, I go around, I, I tell you, I, you can look at these exits and you're coming off of an exit and um, uh, grass is grown over a curb that you got there. Uh, cigarette butts and trash and what have you is basically a, a foot deep and a foot wide all the way around the edge of the curb. Um, those those sort of things just build up, and those sort of things I think can be well again I'm convinced can be addressed. But one of the biggest factors, especially around the exchanges, is currently we've got the uh, the growth of shrubs and trees have really just had zero maintenance on for quite some time. It's all grown up underneath them. Uh, trees have grown up, uh, shrub, uh, uh, smaller trees have grown up around larger trees just because the, the bush hogs couldn't get around close enough around the tree. So I think if we can go there and, and, and clean those up, lift that up, it's gonna also make those exits appear to be much, much safer 
when people are coming in in the late evening hours into our community and they're stopping there, if they can look and see it, and you can see under all that stuff, um, I think that that will make a big impact uh, again on the perception that folks have when they come into our community. So it's a big effort, and can we get there? Um, absolutely. I, you know, I'm convinced that we can get there. It's going to take an effort. Uh, at this point in time, the action statement is public works representatives and any other designated staff will meet to compile the data identifying the existing programs, areas currently maintained, and areas that need attention. Representatives will work together to collectively explore, explore the items above for the purpose of formulating a recommendation to be presented to officials at our next meeting, which is scheduled for June. So that's what we've asked staff to do. So they'll be putting that together. We certainly will have some numbers in. Uh, we've had conversations with GDOT. Uh, there's uh, at least some interest and some excitement that they feel the same way about it. And they, they brought to our attention a maintenance program that they have um, that once we get all this information together, we can formulate it into a proposal and get it to them and then hopefully we'll be able to get some of that uh, expenses offset through uh, through GDOT. And Bill, uh, just piggyback on what you're saying about the reducing the cuts and what have you at the, the, uh, the different exits. You know, um, I think some um, some um, governments have went as far as in the planting different types of grass, uh, say like that. I know I know it's expensive, but if you if you had some um, did some overseeding over around um, those inter uh, interstate uh, Intersections and and overseeded centipede in, you know, how nothing else can grow in there, you know, and you know, not that we expect every area to look almost like it does in that Gill Harbor area, but you know, but that's that's a possible option, you know, that'll reduce how many times it's got to be cut in the long haul. You know? Um, I agree that those are some things down the road that can be looked at. I also do understand that this is a a a new effort. The state in the past has beautification grants out there, but those grants go as far as just allowing you to do something, but yet doesn't provide any, anything other than for maintenance. So again, to be good stewards of the money, it doesn't make good sense to me to take advantage of a grant for beautification, and yet you still don't have the local funding to be able to maintain what you just put in, and that money go to us. Uh, so I, I think once you begin to crawl through this process uh, and once we get up and start walking and I believe uh, I'm convinced we can move forward with uh, from the standpoint that uh, we can move into the areas of moving not only from maintenance but right on into beautification and then being able through that maintenance program maintain you know maintain that beauty and it could make all the difference in the world the way our community looks and is perceived by people that's coming into our community. Um, so again, I, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to this. Um, personally, I was excited that that other local governments felt like that this uh, was a was an item that could be classified as priority one, um, and so we'll work on that. Let me also say this through the, the, the community planning meeting. Uh, you could just tell with the tone of the meeting um, there was probably a little bit of reluctancy to really be fully open. And I think initially some folks went out and probably got the low hanging fruit. Um, but if we continue this effort and do not back away from this, this is going to give us an opportunity to address some issues that are, that are just as serious. Uh, but could also move into the areas of, uh, again, economic development and begin to address some of the issues and concerns that we have, not only with local businesses, but with anybody else that might want to come to this community. So there's a lot of things that once we get this done and, and local governments and the citizens begin to realize that we can work together on these issues to resolve, I think you're going to find that it's going to open the doors for a lot more opportunities. It's going to make a lot of other things easier to get for us to accomplish. So I'm really looking forward to it. I'm very, very excited about it. And again, very, very appreciative of staff's work. Um, first off, of uh, 
putting this together, but, but primarily, uh, as much as anything, it's supporting it and supporting the others. That's the key right there. So very, very proud of that. Back to you now. Sure. Um, um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to attend. I was on a business trip in Sandy Springs, mm -hmm. but I had two residents contact me about when the meeting was. Mm -hmm. And I told them, and they said, no, I really wanted to be there, but I don't work. Are you ready we could do that in the afternoon? Sure. Six or whatever? Sure. Just for your information. Sure. You know, we want to be as flexible as we possibly can. Um, but that is something we can, we can have some meetings as we move along. We can have them in the, you know, possibly in the evening. We can do that. What are y'all looking at? Another in June. In June? In June. It should be our next meeting. What the three items that we have talked about, we will be getting some, the staffs and uh, of all of the local governments will be working on these items prior to that and we'll be able to come back and report on these three at the June meeting and then we will also explore adding to it. I don't want us to get out there and begin to pile on so many things that we just lose sight of something and we can't can't get things accomplished. All of a sudden the task seems greater than we can than we can overcome. Again, it's taking those little steps and beginning to work on these issues and we can make this happen. We can make this community a lot better. One thing that I think also is extremely important is listed as priority number two. Uh, it involves public service announcements and annual events. Um, there's a lot of things that goes on in our community, uh, whether it be public service announcements, kind of going back a little bit about what Ashley was saying, but it could even be just things just between local governments. Um, a lot of times I don't necessarily know what's going on at Lake Park. I kind of would like to know, but I have to make the effort myself to go and try to find out. Um, hey, how are the same way, you know, those sort of things. Where if we had a good coordinated effort between the clerks and the public information officers and those sort of things, to see if there's a way that we can coordinate events in the local communities, um, I do believe then it would make us all uh, a, a little bit, a little bit better and, and a little bit more informed, as well as the citizens more informed in, as far as what's going on in the community. So having a uh, looking and, and um, uh, trying to establish a way that we can create better communication between the local governments, uh, I think is extremely important. So we can continue to work on that, but we can do that by, by uh, establishing public information contacts with each one of the local governments uh, in an effort to improve that communication. We can, if uh, listed, we can explore the creation of a Greater Lounge website link. Uh, there was some discussion about a website. I think you're really getting outside the box, maybe, and sometimes you need to think outside the box, but that's going to be pretty expensive to just do a standalone. But I think that if we could go into each one of our respective websites and create a link that would link to cities and counties and and one particular link that will have maybe a calendar for everybody. So, you know, it would list Hay Hours, and it list Lake Park, and Dashing, and Remington, and Valdosta, and Lambs County, and, you know, those sort of things. Again, extremely important to the communities, uh, as well as uh, not only our ourselves, but for the citizens as well. Um, Consider the framework for the community calendar for the purpose of advertising local government events. Establish a protocol that assists with eliminating event date conflicts. Again, you know, we all try to go to different meetings, but we also realize that there's a lot of conflicts out there that makes it difficult to go to these. It's a recommendation to facilitate more communication with the citizens. Again, we want our goal, and I and I and I, and I wholeheartedly believe this with the, with the commission is that every one of you has a desire to communicate as much as you possibly can with the citizens out there. Let them know as much about what's going on as you possibly can and stay plugged in with them. Uh, and, and I believe that we all do a very good job of that, but is there a way that we could do it with a little bit more of a, uh, of a um, uh, concerted, more focused effort? Again, coming together to have one 
one way of being able to do this to make it a little bit clearer so the citizens out there, as much as anything would know, would begin to learn that they could go here and get all the information they needed to know about what's going on around the county. One source. And see if that would be a possibility. Uh, plan of action on that is for public information representatives and any other designated staff will meet to evaluate current methods of communication and a plan for enhanced base on the list of above, the items we just talked about. And again, the plan will be presented to, the, to uh, elected officials at the next June meeting. Uh, so again, uh, staff knows uh, and local governments, other staff members also know what, what uh, they're trying to get accomplished. And I do know this. Um, you know, I know our staff well enough to know that they're going to be pushing that agenda. And they will have those answers and they'll be on top of it in June. So as you have your conversations with other local leaders, local city councilmen, local mayors, city managers, um, again, it'll be a good idea to kind of keep this at the forefront so we can keep these agenda items moving along. So if you don't, it will be very, very easy uh, for it, us to get to the meeting in June and everybody's looking at each other. Why are we here? We didn't get anything accomplished. We want to have things accomplished, have that information there so we can move to the next level and if necessary, figure out at that point in time what we're going to be able to do these things. Is it practical? If it is, we begin to take the steps to move forward. If it's not, then we have to then make a decision to set it aside and yet put another issue up there in front so we've got something else to work on. If there's something else more. I just, if I could take a second. Sure. I, uh, I just I'm feeling led to say that I think that, again, going back to my statement a minute ago about leading by example, I think that we have a responsibility as commissioners. I mean, at, at any given municipality, we have, what, at least two representatives at this table. I mean, I'm thinking about, you know, all cities. I mean, we. I, I think we need to reach out and, and not maybe not put. I don't know what you when you say establish public information contacts. I don't know exactly what that means, but I feel like I have a responsibility to do better and to do more and to be better and and spend a little more time in the municipalities that are in my district and then come back and report that to you because you're absolutely right. I mean, as chairman, you got you got all this stuff to kind of you know, all these plates to keep spending. And I challenge the other commissioners to say, hey, let's get a little more engaged in these communities, reach out. So like you said, when we get back to this meeting in June, they will all be able to, without hesitation, to say, I see a difference. I see you, you know, being more involved. And maybe even, I mean, this is just kind of shot in the dark, but maybe even periodically, once a month, or at every commission meeting, maybe we take a minute and say, you know, here's the, here's the thing, the good things that are going on in our district this city, that city, unincorporated areas, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if we're talking about truly a passion for getting information out, I mean, I can't really think of a better way. Yeah. I, I will say this, uh, and I won't, I won't, I don't mean this as, as, as to be overly cautious, but I don't, also don't want the county to be perceived as um, pushing, shoving, dragging, whatever the case might be, the municipalities along with this. This should be something that everybody should, should come to the consensus that yes, these issues need to be addressed, and yes, we're going to work on them together. But at the end of the day, everybody has to embrace it, but somebody has to always say, come on, let's go. And if that has to be the county, then that's the role we'll play. Uh, but, but that is a bit of a slippery slope. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be totally honest with you, and I'm, I'm not naive enough to understand that and, and grasp that. So we're going to have to work through this process because, uh, you, you know, it's been a long time since we've gotten to something like this. And it's time that we do it. It's also very, very practical that if we can look at an issue in our community and we can address it as a community, then it's time for us to do that. It's not going to do us any, the citizens any favors if one 
entity or the other takes this on, but yet nobody else shares in that responsibility as well. So these are going to be items that we all can address and we all can work on together as community items that we all should be able to support. Um, and so that's that's the reason why we're going to just kind of have to move forward with it and begin to get the buy-in from the, from the uh, local governments, and I, I'm, I'm totally convinced that we'll be able to get that. Um, but this is not necessarily a Lowndes County effort. This is a community effort. These are things right here that need to be identified. And, at, and when we get to the end of this and we've been able to look back on some of these items and we've seen them come to, come to fruition, you're going to find that there's going to be nobody that's going to be able to deny the fact that we're not in a better place today than what we were in the past. So I think it's going to be extremely important that we, that we do that. But again, it is a community effort. Um, the next agenda item, or the next item that was discussed, uh, was animal care and the services that go to animal care. Uh, we've had a lot of discussion, as we know. Uh, we've actually, uh, one of our agenda items is going to include um, an updated version of uh, our animal control ordinance. But again, we want to look at issues, um, the things we want to focus on is we want to compare animal welfare and enforcement needs across the community. We want to explore the ordinance updates that could assist with enforcement, to find the proper ways to tether an animal. We're doing that. Lowndes County is already there. You know, we're moving in that direction. Compare rural care enforcement needs to urban care enforcement needs. That again is where it's extremely important. We know we have this little bit of separation about, well, in the urban areas, the way I do, the way an animal is, is, is housed or kept could be a little bit different than what it is in a, in a rural area. Um, but reality is, is that we have, to, I believe, we have to get to a point of where our Animal control officers, when they go out there and look at it, they don't have to look around for the city limit sign to see if, well, how, what, how do I react based on my location? I do believe this is another one of those things where the ordinance ought to be uh, identical whether you're in the cities or whether you're in the county. It should be the same. Um, I know that there there will be some challenges, but if, without the challenges, you know, we would already be there. It wouldn't be complicated. So again, we want to work through that. Uh, define cruelty as it relates to our community. I think that that, to me, is probably one of the most critical things that we're going to have to come to. Is come to the point where, where are you at for an animal control officer to go to a scene where he's gotten a call, witness, or whatever, and he has to make a decision or she, about is, is that animal cruel? It makes it very, very difficult to ask those individuals, as well trained as they are, to be able to bring a case against a citizen for animal cruelty if there's not some very, very good, clear lines and definitions of what animal cruelty is and how that can be determined. And by doing that again, I mentioned here, but it's education. I believe in some cases you have to educate um, the some of the folks in the judicial system as well to say this really is what is accepted guidelines for animal cruelty, rather than say something that well I don't necessarily think that was really animal cruelty just because he couldn't get to a bowl of water and it was upside down and it was ten feet away. Um, the issue is, is, is what, what the animal control officer has to do. Yeah, that's the way it was, but that's what I found when I was there. You know, the, the, on the other end of someone could argue that the bowl was just turned up 10 minutes ago. So that's not animal cruelty. Animal cruelty is, is when that animal bowl has been over for a week you know, and, the, and that poor animal hasn't been able to really get the water out of the shore, rain fall out of the mud hole. That, that to me is animal cruelty. Condition of the animal. The, the conditions of the animal. I mean, that, that was the telltale. But <laughs> at the condition of the animal, have you already moved into animal cruelty? If you're letting an animal get, it, 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 
emaciated, sure, that's a clear definition, but do you wait until that happens before you make a decision that they don't want to be treated cruelly? Again, those are very, very difficult things to determine, but you're going to, we're, we're going to have to, we're going to have to work on those. But it's important that we work on it again community-wide. Uh, I think that, opinion. for example, cruelty. I think we can we can solicit the, the input from the court judge, from the mm -hmm. animal patrol, from every city and the county, and we can all agree on this is what's cruel and this mm -hmm. is not cruel. That's it. The, 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 the biggest challenge I see is, is is restricting tethering, that sort of thing, because there is a clear difference between Webster Street versus Shiloh Road versus wherever. I mean, you can't tell a man out there that he got you know, can find his dog build a fence or whatever, but I think that in some can, in some instances inside the city limits you can. Yeah. Well, there's a big difference in even though the laws may be the same, I think that there it's it's how they're it's how the different citizens in the unincorporated area and citizens in the in the in the municipalities how they look at um, at the the animal ordinances. I know some folks in the, in the counties just say, as long as my dog's on my property, he can roam free and do what he wants to do. To where if you're in the city and he leaves your yard and goes over to your neighbor's yard and does his business, the neighbor usually is not real happy about that. Um, so that's where you get into the, the different issues. Um, well, like the leash law inside the city says that if your pet is, is on your property, he doesn't have to have a leash. The leash laws are the same throughout the community. That's it. And the problem that the chairman just um, described as far as the if you're inside the city limits and your neighbor's dog runs over and does business in your yard, people aren't happy. Whereas out in the county, it's not that big a deal. Um, out in the county, cats are the reverse of that. Um, and we'll talk about that whenever we get the ordinance, but cats are prolific. Well, the same rules that um, govern dogs being on the property is the same as cats um, with cats and the problem with the cats is where a dog might just come over and it might be a little hole or it might do its business cats damage your car um, they tend to attack your cat more often and now you've got an abscess and you're at the vets and stuff and so cats are just a big problem so there's a lot of issues there that has to be addressed but again the plan of action there is for animal services and other designated staff or representatives will meet to evaluate current statistics in an effort to present recommendations again at the June meeting. Uh, again, if we don't begin to talk about these things as a community wide, as a community whole, we're just going to have fragmented conversations. I mean, you'll have a conversation with the folks in the cities, and all of them, all different ones of the cities will have different opinions, and the counties will have different or the county might have different opinions. So ultimately, though, if we can all come together and begin to talk about them, we can begin to get the same general consensus about how an issue needs to be resolved. And so, uh, again, we can get that thing. Uh, so I, I feel real good about this. I feel good about this effort. Uh, but I do also realize um, that it is something that we're going to have to continue to have discussions on. We're going to have to continue to put it, put it in the forefront, and we will get, I'm confident that staff will come back, all staff will come back with good recommendations and good information so that we as local officials can begin to, to uh, move toward implementation, if that if that's works to, on some of these, and if, uh, if we decide again that we can't, and why we can't, and it's agreed upon that we can't go in that direction, then we know then we can set that aside and go ahead and look at something else and, and try to work on some other. But the key is with all of it is that we recognize the fact that in our community there are issues and there are things that are community-wide issues that needs to be addressed. At the same time, realizing that each one of us and the folks in the unincorporated areas and the folks in the municipalities do have different sets of needs, but there are many things out there that we can address as a community that will enhance Lowndes County, Balboa, Serena, and Lake Park, Basher, and Hayden. So I'm very excited about it um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to the next meeting.
put it where we can discuss it and move forward and do some things about it. Good. Well, thank you. But I did feel like that it is, you know, it is important. Um, we have a tendency to address the immediate needs that are in front of us every day and try to resolve those where we kind of lose sight of some things that's out there that really we could head off a lot of issues if we were a little bit further out uh, and thinking a little further out. And that's really part of what these meetings are. So uh, again, I can't say enough about how excited I am and how much uh, I feel like the staff as well seems to be excited about it. I hope that the municipalities and their staff members will be just as excited about it. Uh, and by doing that, we'll be able to get some of these things accomplished. And I, and I firmly believe at the end of the day, uh, we, will, we will have a much, much better community. When I talk about the community, I'm not talking about the cities or the county. I'm talking about the combined development. And I firmly believe that there are some things that has to be addressed from the community standpoint. Definitely this discussion to come together. Has anybody got any questions or anything that I could help clarify? If you need something to clarify, I'll get patients to take care of it. <laughs>